they're so worried about inflation expectations that this rise in oil prices and petrol prices uh, could have a, a negative effect on inflation expectations because really one of the most important elements of their view that inflation is going to fall from here is also that wages growth isn't going to rise much from here. So they need wages to remain at 4% or below. And of course, if this higher oil and petrol price environment continues, it could start to put further upward pressure on wages into next year, which would be of great concern to them. What can the RBA do about oil prices? Well, there's nothing they can do, of course. They've just got to take that into consideration in their policy settings. But the situation in Australia right now is that monetary policy is really doing the least possible it can to deal with this inflation risk. We can compare our interest rates to what we're seeing around the world. We're at least 1% or more lower than other countries. We're almost 1.5% below what's happening in the United States with interest rates. And of course, our interest rate is still below inflation. So the RBA is doing everything it can to get the economy to slow and to get rid of inflation without having to raise rates by one basis point more than it has to. But of course, that strategy means that as the risks of inflation develop, they have to respond. And that's what the oil price situation is throwing out at us right now, on top of, of course, what looks like a more resilient economy. Michelle Bullock is enjoying her first week as RBA governor. Could her honeymoon be over very quickly? Yeah, it's, it's looking increasingly like that. Uh, when, when they sat down in early August, um, it was looking like their forecasts uh, were quite comfortable, that the economy was slowing and that inflation was starting to retreat. But the data and the developments of the past two weeks have really put that into question. Not only have we had stronger growth, we've had a spectacular increase in employment, all suggesting that the economy is not slowing as quickly as they need. And then the other thing, of course, is evidence of this building inflation pressure, which is both not just oil prices, but also coming out of business surveys. So I fear that her honeymoon will be short. I doubt there will be a move at her first meeting as chair next month, but I think there is a very high probability that we could see another rate hike on Melbourne Cup Day. You've indicated a rate rise in November is possible. Many leading economists have stated we are at the top of the cycle. Where do you think the peak is? Well, I think we're hopefully very close to it. It's really now just trying to make sure that they deal with these risks. Um, we don't know. This is uncharted territory. Uh, we've had a historically large increase in interest rates but that only takes interest rates back to levels that not too long ago were considered pretty normal. So we really have no idea when this is going to be done. Um, and I think the main, the main priority for the Reserve Bank Board should be not to get us into a situation where interest rates have to go up to 55 or 6% like we're seeing in places like the United States or New Zealand, because that will guarantee a recession in this economy. I'm sure of that. And if that means taking out some further insurance now with a rate hike or two before Christmas then I think that's a, a sensible policy strategy. What are the chances of staying on a trajectory for a soft landing? Yeah, look, I think, I think that the economy is slowing. It's all just about whether it's an, slowing enough. The consumer certainly has uh, tightened the belts and discretionary spending's down, but businesses are in very good shape and investment spending's still quite strong. I think another rate hike or two in this cycle doesn't necessarily get us away from the soft landing. In fact, it might be the way to stay on that narrow path. Because I think one thing that's quite clear both overseas and here is that we've underestimated the resilience of these economies to higher interest rates. And I think the real risk is that we don't do enough on interest rates and let the economy and inflation get away from us that ends up, as the RBA warned in their minutes, with a situation where they have to take the cash rate up to a much higher level, which does guarantee a recession. So. I actually do see the soft landing is still the most likely scenario, even with another rate hike this year. What is the neutral rate looking like to you at the moment? It's a very tough question. It's the big question. Look, we know that when all is said and done, whether that's in 12 months or in two or three years, our interest rate's going to need to settle at, at around this level or even a bit higher. We have strong fundamentals of growth and our inflation target is actually higher than other countries in the world. So I think the neutral interest rate is probably something around this level. But of course, inflation is above target. 
and unemployment is, well, according to most estimates, below the the full employment level. So, you know, the question is, is, is it restrictive? Is it restrictive enough to get us back onto, as the previous Governor Lowe said, the even keel? And I am concerned that it's not, and that has been my view for some time. Um, and the resilience of this economy, the strong jobs growth, I think highlights these points. And we haven't touched on the dollar yet, but what is your forecast of where it's headed? Look, it's very tricky because commodity prices are putting upward pressure on it and so the Aussie dollar should be trading up 80, 90 cents versus the US if, if the iron ore price was any indicator. But of course, our big negative interest rate differential as our rates being so much lower than those overseas are putting downward pressure. So clearly the downward pressure is, is winning the day. And I do worry that that could eventually become inflationary if it falls further. It's certainly supercharging the high oil price effect on retail petrol prices here. So I think the currency is going to continue to drift in the low 60s, but it's really hard to be clear on this because the main factors determining the Aussie dollar are moving in different directions at the moment.